I'm Robert Field, and I am fishing my way across Mississippi, bouncing between state parks in my RV and checking out all the best fishing holes, cultural hotspots, and delicious eats along the way. Screaming. This time, we're fishing two different lakes near the state capitol in search of double-digit bass. We're dodging gators and working frog lures to entice explosive topwater strikes. Then we're chatting with a Mississippi wildlife management officer about the merits of harvesting bass before whipping up some largemouth po' boys back at the RV. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. We might have, but I had to suck. No nothing. How you doing? Well, I might have to stop and go cold. Pretty good. Is there one here? Yeah, it's about one around the corner. <laughs> and a whole lot of woods. <laughs> yeah, we, we're ready for so. that. I didn't get the blue shirt memo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shallow water. <laughs> That's right, they're gonna see us. Well, they won't see, yeah. That'll, that'll be good. That'll you're, be right. how, you're out of trees, darling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good morning, ladies and gents. It is early. Brooks and I got up at 3, 3.15. <laughs> Drove an hour to get here, but the whole plan was to get here in the dark, launch our kayaks in the dark, and get out there to the spot right as the light is starting to come up. And there's just kind of the first hints of light on the horizon through the trees. So we got here at the right time. This frog bite, it's gonna be imperative that we're here early in the day. Cause as soon as that sun's up pretty good and it starts getting real hot, those fish are gonna move deeper out of the pads. Most of them. So we did it, we made it. Struggling a little bit, I think. <laughs> Brain's not quite working yet, but. Trying to rub a few brain cells together. That's right. We're feeling good, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get on some fish. I think we're about ready to launch. Yep. Probably gonna be pretty light on footage uh, here in the morning because it's gonna be pitch black out there, but it's calm, it's nice, it's not too hot yet. That will change, that's a promise. I hear them talking, some frogs. Yeah, we're hearing frogs, which is what you want. We're gonna match the hatch. We'll see what happens. Let's get it. The country and also, you know, like this YouTube channel. Oh, it's a gator. <laughs> it's a little baby gator. Yeah, he was about to hop in my boat. For the meantime, I'm just absolutely gorgeous out here. Wow. Got some deer here. And Brad says he said these deer will eat the lily pads that we'll be fishing. A lot of stumps in this place. A little minefield through here. Brad's already hit a few with his motor. And now you, you kind of popping these with a lot of pauses or? I'm trying to figure out what to, how to hit. Okay, so just switch it up till we get a hit, huh? Yeah. That's a good tactic no matter what you're doing for for whatever species. All right, made it to the first area we're gonna fish. A lot of stumps, it's pretty shallow, and a lot of lily pads, which is what we're looking for. Again, focusing on frogs. We'll be throwing topwater frogs. This is Brad Case's favorite way to fish, and I'd say it's, it's hard to beat a frog bite when you're bass fishing. It's probably one of the most exciting takes you can, you can have. Oh, there's a stump. Lots of stumps, so we're going to keep our drives up, we're going to stand up, paddle, and just work all these lily pads, and hopefully get a few explosions. We'll see what happens. Tight drag, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll be able to put that thumb on there when you set the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Got coyotes howling in the distance. Got gators in here. We out here, y'all. Oh, there you go. On the buzz bait. I choked it down too. Brooks, first blood. Nice work, man. Thank you. First blood for Brooksy. Uh, I, call, I call it 17. No, a little short of that. All right, well. 
I plan on keeping some today and I think this would be a good keeper size, but we're uh, it's a little early in the day to be keeping them on a stringer. So I think we're gonna wait to catch, hopefully catch some later and keep those ones. But uh, I'll always take a good morning topwater bite. Some nice, healthy fish right there. There it is. Oh, broke you. Dang. That sounded like a good hit too. Got him. Oh, and he came off. Oh. Uh, the, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. <laughs> Maybe not heavy enough. It's heavy. I mean, I got and I got 65 pound braid on this. Yeah, the braid I'm not worried about. In there. Yeah, it was that one little hole. Yep. That's why I was working on the toes. I got that one right on the bed trying to get to it. Man, I don't care who you are. That's fun. That's exciting when you see that. You're watching this frog so intently, and then. All right, guys. Well, had my first blow up on the frog. That's what we've been waiting for. Haven't been out here very long. The thing about this frog fishing is that you really gotta kinda give them a second to take it down. You wanna make sure they've got it. A lot of times they'll miss it or just not commit to it. And so you'll set the hook and just pull it right out of their mouth. And there I'm not sure what happened, but even if you get the hooks in them, then you gotta try to force these fish out of these thick, thick lily pads. So I'm fishing a really heavy line. This is 65 pound braid. And the braid is better than fluoro or mono because the braid can actually cut through those lily pads if they get wrapped around it. So that's the concept, but got a hit. So I feel good about how I'm working it and about my presentation. Uh, just wasn't able to keep it buttoned, but that's okay. It's a good sign. We're gonna keep working down and I'm basically looking for any little pocket, any little hole in these real thick lily pads. And there I, I landed it right in one of these holes, couple twitches and boom, he hit it. So no fish yet for Rob, but we at least just learned something and we're kind of figuring something out. I'm gonna keep working up in here and get thicker and deeper into these pads. See if we can't find some big girls. <laughs> Looky here. Look at this guy. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Not that big. It's okay though. It's Brad's second hit. Oh, what is it? Gator? No. -uh. Oh man. Oh man, I gotta get footage of this. Oh, he came off? <laughs> First gator of the day. I got a feeling it might not be our last. Got him, got him. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not very big. On the frog. On the frog, on that popper frog still. Hey. All right, first blood for Rob. Hit it real close to the boat right here. And I mean, just a really subtle, it was not an explosion. He just kind of slurped it down. And I was able to get him out pretty easy because he hit it so close. And that's on that popping frog. Just a little guy, not the, the monster we're out here looking for, but that's okay. First one's the hardest, so I'm feeling better. Whoa, goodbye to you too. Feels good. Got one on the board. It kind of messed my frog up. So we brought some super glue, which is really handy if you're frog fishing. You can kind of plug the holes so it doesn't fill with water so much and then 
if this thing gets messed up by these fish, you can kind of keep it alive a lot longer with some super glue handy. But he's not in bad shape. All right, let's keep at it, see if we can get some more. There's definitely more in here. Uh, feels like it might be this front one. Because if it was the back one, you could like stand up as far forward as you can and might get it. Yeah, I figured I'd just hand you some things and I get to rocking. I just didn't want to overdo it. And... Brooksy here is stuck. I got the, uh, like a bump on a log. The Mississippi power pole. I just hit, I hit something right here. The Mississippi power pole. I'm about to get stuck. I feel like I'm on something now. Yeah, dude, I think I'm stuck now. No way. Oh, okay. Stable boat. <laughs> deep is it? It's deeper than I'd rather go. Um. <laughs> cool dance. <laughs> so Brooks had a stump, a little skinny stump go up his scupper hole. About to get on the bow of your boat? Certified stuck. You could get on the bow of my boat. I've never had two people on it. Oh. What was that? Dude, oh no. What it was? kind of like a fish jumped over the log. Oh gosh. <laughs> Just nice and easy, yeah? Nice and easy, yeah. Down in there. Oh god. We're sinking. Dude. Easy. Oh, that's a bad idea. Alright, I'm getting back here. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh could you push down on the bottom with your paddle and try to lift yourself up off it a little bit? Try to push straight down so we don't break the paddle. It's out of the scupper now. I'm on a real sketchy position. That's good though. Now, there's no scuppers in front of you, so go backwards. Go backwards? Right? There's no scupper in front of that one, right? Look down at your boat. La! <laughs> Piece of cake. Thanks, bud. Man. I was like, yeah, that was a. Uh, we, we were turning this boat into a submarine with both of us on here. <laughs> that was exciting, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting up here in the thick of it now. It was on the left side, is where I got the bike. thought he was monstrous. But that Z-Man frog getting it done. Man, I swear there's something bigger over there. I, I just had one swirl on this and he missed it. Frog. Oh, oh, there you go. 
there it is. There you go. Nice work, Brad. Oh man, he wanted it. Nice work, man. Bloop. Yeah. Right up in there. That sucker right around that stop on that, on that left side. Oh man. It's that's the thing. It's like getting the bite's not easy. Actually hooking them's not easy. And then the real hard part starts. You gotta get them out. Get them out of there, exactly. This is a challenging way of fishing for sure. What is fun? Oh, it's so fun. Seeing that blow up, man, not not much beats it. Maybe about two and a half, maybe. But yeah, through uh, change over to the white with the bright skies. Sometimes I prefer to throw the lighter colors, but not a bad fish. It's hot out here, we're working for them, but still getting some bites. It's kind of gnarly bringing it up through all those lily pads. There she goes. There we go. No, dude, that was the bigger fish. Oh. oh, there's one. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> What is it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, fish on, except it's not a fish. It's a baby alligator. And there's more back there making crazy noises. <laughs> Not the droids we are looking for. Look at this little guy. <laughs> um, oh gosh. I don't really know the best way to go about this. Check this guy out. A little alligator. <laughs> Just a little baby. <laughs> I thought I had a fish, I was all excited, and then uh, I saw the tail flopping around and realized uh, not the target species here. Well, it kind of felt inevitable throwing these topwater frogs. I mean, frogs are a main forage for alligators, especially these smaller ones. And I'm kind of joking about him whining, trying to call his mama, but that's probably exactly what he's doing. And I, I set the hook so hard because the last few have come off that it's in there pretty good. I feel bad for him. Let's see if we can't, there we go. Okay, now let go. Please let go. Please let go, buddy. I'm gonna set you on your way. Please let go. Okay. <laughs> well, not the target species, but pretty cool. My first alligator, I guess we'll call that a new species for Rob here. And we'll set him on his way. Look at him. <laughs> Pew! Took off. <laughs> well, that's cool. I guess we'll take a uh, alligator off the bucket list. Not the bass we're looking for and golly, it's gotten hot. But I threw that frog in there and I thought, I mean, I saw a wake running towards it. <laughs> And I thought, oh, this looks like a big one. And it just erupted on the thing. And I thought I had a monster bass until it started flailing around and that tail came out of the water. And I realized that is not a bass. That is uh, my first Mississippi alligator. And we, now we've seen some bigger ones in here and even the bigger ones would hit this frog. And that would be tricky, we'll call it. But that little guy, pretty cool. Pretty cool to get my hands on him. I think that's the first time I've ever touched a gator. Pretty cool. And I didn't get bit. So we're gonna call that a win. But I'm gonna back out of here. This, this area is kind of, it feels a little stagnant. I mean, there's plenty of pads, but we're kind of up against, kind of out of the main channel of this creek that we've come up into from the lake. 
and it feels pretty stagnant and I haven't gotten a bite since I got back in here. It looked good on the surface, but now upon further inspection, it's kind of scummy. And while the alligators obviously don't mind, I'm not sure that uh, at least a big bass would be hiding up in here. That was pretty cool though to, to hook him and he started doing that <coughs> noise. And then I heard about, sounded like five, six, seven other little baby gators. His brothers and sisters were in there kind of calling back to him. Uh, but he should be no worse for the wear. Got the hook out. He's all good. It's kind of a new experience here in Mississippi. All right, let's back out of here. See if we can't, we can't find uh, some fish instead of reptiles. And we're stuck. And we're stuck again. Yeah. There's so many stumps and logs and sticks in here. Keep getting stuck. Phew. Got some bass busting on bait up here. <laughs> it might hit the frog. Oh, oh, that was a better fish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this. I'm trying to get to the right spot. They're going nuts. Yeah, those looked a little bigger. Oh, oh he hit you. Yeah, he hit it. Did you break off or he just oh, it's still there. He just missed it, huh? He just didn't get it good. That was good sized fish. Man, there were better fish than that little bunch. Oh! Turn it on the cameras. Story of my life. I let it sink. Man. Yeah, I let it sink to the bottom. All the way? I mean, I think so. Well, we just had a school of bass coming up, busting little baits on the surface, going nuts. Some of them look pretty good. But I mean, as quickly as it came up, they went back down and now we've been working this for about five minutes with nothing. And then there it was. I, I finally got a hit on this paddle tail and of course, turning on this GoPro, I uh, let the pressure off of him and he came off. <laughs> it's, not, it's not hot, is it? Unbearable. I mean, that says 98, but it feels like Doubt it. That's not the heat index. 198. Just finished our, our morning session on Calling Panther Reservoir. Sweet little lake, a lot of laydowns, tons of lily pads, gators, caught my first alligator. That was exciting. Um, not as hot and heavy and crazy as we were hoping. Brad said it's one of the slower days he's ever had on this lake, as, as luck would have it. But that's okay. We, we, got, we had a plan. We're sticking to it. This morning we fished this lake. Now we're going to go get lunch, regroup, most importantly, get out of this heat. It is unbearable. Like, we don't feel okay. So we're gonna cool off, get some grub, and then we're gonna move to Ross Barnett Reservoir, which is probably maybe the best known lake in the state of Mississippi for bass fishing. We will see you guys at the ramp at Ross Barnett. Hopefully this evening is on fire. We'll see what happens. Yee -hee. Well, morning went well on Calling Panther. We just got here to Ross Barnett, one of the most legendary, most well-known bass fisheries in the state of Mississippi. It's late afternoon right now. We're gonna fish till sunset. We're hoping to find some schooling bass. We gotta go down this canal, probably about 15 minutes to get out to the main lake. Brad says it's gonna be full of lily pads and thick grass, plenty of cover for these bass in this hot part of the year. We got a variety of base tied on. We'll talk about that more when we get out there, but hopefully we can find some fish. We're gonna keep some fish, I think, today. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get out there. All right, so just got out kind of the main lake. This is totally different kind of structure, totally different looking vegetation than what we were fishing at Calling Panther. We got some kind of reed type grass. We got a little bit more sparse lily pads, bigger lily pads. What's your depth there, Brad? Two and a half right here. Two and a half feet, so still shallow. 
You got pads for cover, but this stuff's pretty sparse, and I gotta believe these fish are as hot as we are. They're gonna be looking for shade, and so I'm gonna look for kind of some of the, the thicker stuff, but this looks real fishy. It's looking good. Got him, got him. Oh, oh, good fish, good fish. Oh, good fish, but he's all up in this stuff. Oh, I gotta try to get to him, but I don't know how that's gonna be possible. It feels heavy. It feels real heavy. Oh, look at it. Oh, yeah. Good fish, bro. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Finally, a frog fish exactly where it should have been. And getting it out of this grass is no easy feat. Look at that solid Mississippi largemouth. I have been working these thick pads with this frog. And then I finally just kind of started thinking like a frog. Like what would a frog do? How would a frog act? And when I hit the open water, I worked it a little faster. And then as I got to cover, got back to the lily pads, I slowed it down as if a frog that's like, oh, I'm safe. And as soon as I got there, there it was. It just annihilated it right on the edge of the, uh, of the lily pads here, these smaller lily pads. That's it, and look at that, just choked, inhaled the frog, swallowed the whole thing. And I mean, no monster, but solid, solid fish. And it feels good to get this thing on the frog here on Ross Barnett. Oh uh, yeah, sun's starting to go down. I got a feeling it might be about to turn on. But I think we're gonna go ahead and keep that. And by doing that, we probably only need to keep two. If we can get one more like that, or even a little smaller, I think that'd be a great dinner for Brooks and I, and maybe Brad's gonna join us, I'm not sure. But uh, again, I know it feels, and even to me, it feels a little weird to keep a bass, but uh, I think as you're gonna learn later in this episode, there's nothing wrong with it. And I think this guy's gonna be delicious. And like I said, he's kind of on the upper end, but we're gonna go ahead and keep him and try to get one more to add to it. But so fun watching that thing slurp down the frog on these pads. We've had to work for our bites, but we're getting some bites here in Mississippi in the dead, dead heat of summer. Great fish. Atta boy. Yeah. Is that on your... I, I thought he hit hay. I did too. Yeah, another little one. I got my camera out to take a photo of you because it was good light, and then I think he did. About had to. Yeah, it's another little guy. Well, for whatever reason, these guys are chasing bait here on top and uh, taking advantage of it because it's been a tough day. Try not to make it any tougher with trebles where we don't want them. Just a good little eating size fish. Yeah, so this one's not quite, this is like 13 and some change. Okay, so. We're gonna have to let this guy go, but we're gonna keep after it. I think, we'll, I think we got our limit here, man. They, they keep popping up. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's such a pretty release. There he goes. <laughs> He swam off. That's number two. They're uh, they're chasing topwater. Spook. All right, sun's going down, and we got some bass blowing up on topwater. The boys have already caught a few. They're coming up, and then going back down, and then coming up. They're chasing bait out of the water. I'm in seven two and about where you're at. I'm in two and a half here. It sounds like they're willing to hit topwater. There they are. Thank you. Yeah, he is coming this way. That's big, dude. That's seven, eight feet. Uh, big old alligator. Probably seven foot long. Oh. Ow, and they sharp too. Oh. 
God, how did he miss that? They're everywhere. Hey, I can't get my hooks out. <laughs> I'm going into the wind without pedaling. It's that gator's pulling me in. He's coming for, oh. Go. That was a better one. Oh, is there two of them? No way. Yeah. Brooks has got two on the same, the same oh, spook. One just came off. Oh, one came off. Catching them two at a time. Actually, it's heating up here as the sun goes down. That one's keep. Yeah, that looks like a keeper. Fat. <clears throat> Dang, he wasn't coming off. There it is. Oh god. All right, there we go. Like I said, good, good eating size fish right there. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, he nailed it. Get closer, then. Nice, another keeper for Brad. So 12 and a 15. 15 inches, nice. 14 minimum. Right, you can He'll eat. If you don't, don't trash the lake. <laughs> All right guys, well that's the end of the day. Losing the light. We're gonna head back in, but before we do that, I don't know if we're gonna get to clean in these fish or not before dark. We may end up doing it in the morning, but one thing you always wanna do is gut your fish the day of. All the parasites and bacteria, that kind of thing, are gonna live in the gut. So we're gonna gut the fish first. It's really simple to do. And the other benefit of doing this on the water is you can kind of return all those nutrients back into the lake, back in the ecosystem. And it kind of doesn't get wasted. All kinds of critters and small animals will feed on this. And I am gutting a fish in gator country with my legs dangling, the water feels like a questionable move here, but we're just gonna open up that gut cavity, kind of from the anus forward to right between the these fins down here. And then we're just gonna rip all this out, everything in there. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. So you're just ripping this out, liver, heart, all that. Little fish and probably little gators will be feeding on this. And by doing this, we buy us some time. We don't have to clean these fish tonight. We can do it in the morning. Easy peasy. But that sun is about to go down, so we'll get this guy. And the other, I think we got four bass total. We'll get them all gutted and then we'll see. Maybe tonight I'll feel like cleaning them, but if not, we'll do it in the morning at the rig. But these guys should be real tasty. And that's done, it's looking good. Boom, gut cavity cleaned out, we'll rinse it out. And that guy's good to go and now he can sit overnight. We don't have to worry about uh, parasites or anything like that coming out of the gut cavity. Money. Get the rest of these and go in or something? Yeah, we've got the rest of them and uh, I said we get out of here. It's been a long day, it's been hot. I'm worn out, I don't know about you. A fun day, it's probably the toughest time of year to bass fish and we got it done. Got some good fish. I had a blast on these frogs and getting on schooling fish. Call that a win. Yeah, man. Got him. <laughs> On the way in. Just a little guy. <laughs> we went out there, we've been pedaling around, suffering the heat, and here we are right at the end of the day and catching some just in the canal on the way back in. Isn't that about usually how it goes? Do all this stuff, got all these theories and Best fishing is just right at the ramp. The ramp's literally like 50 feet that way. Well, that was an absolute blast throwing those topwater frogs for bass with Brad Case. But like I mentioned, I know that at least some of you guys are a little squeamish about the idea of us keeping harvesting bass out of those fisheries. 
So I don't want you to take my word for it. We are now here at the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Fisheries to meet up with Ryan Jones, and he's gonna give you his expert, educated opinion about keeping bass and what that means for a bass population in any fishery. So I think this is gonna be pretty cool, pretty educational. We're about to meet up with him. We'll see what he has to say. Well, first off, Ryan, thanks for taking the time. I know this is pretty last minute. Uh, why don't you tell us your name and your kind of title or your role here at at the Mississippi Department. Yeah, it's my pleasure. My name is Ryan Jones. I'm a Central Region Fisheries Biologist, so project leader for the Central Region, which kind of touches from Meridian over to Vicksburg. Okay. We're responsible for the fisheries management of public water bodies, reservoirs, oxbows, river streams, state lakes, state park lakes. Maybe talk a little bit about some of the programs, whether it's stocking or whatever else, that the state of Mississippi is doing to enhance the fisheries here. All the different regions, the project leaders, they have their own objectives within the fisheries management plans of the water bodies that they have to manage. And so some of us do it a little different. I'm real big on habitat, you know, okay. vegetation management and adding hardwood structures or, or gravel beds or something like that, depending on the water body that we're trying to manage. And sometimes we'll try to uh, move, you know, native aquatic vegetation to provide quality habitat for brim. And, you know, native vegetation is, is optimal for a fishery. You're going to grow a better fish population in, in a lake or a pond reservoir that's got native vegetation than one that has none or one that has exotic, sure. you know, vegetation. So I spent a lot of time trying to... Uh, manage exotics. No, I think that's really cool because I like when I was asking about programs I, I think that most people think about stocking programs. That's kind of the obvious You want more fish for people to catch you physically put more fish in the lake So it's pretty cool hearing you talk about habitat and I also noticed that you keep talking about brim And I would assume that that's kind of because if the brim population is doing well Then all the predators that are eating the brim that's right. are gonna naturally do well. So that's 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 interesting That wasn't what I was expecting you to say right, forage management Sure, you know, right. So if they don't have anything to eat, you won't have adults. Right, you know? <laughs> right. So you gotta start from the bottom, work your way up. Well, and so speaking about forage, you know, we're here in the Jackson area going for largemouth bass. I've heard that in a body of water, if you've got a ton of smaller bass, it's a lot of fish competing for the same food. And so I was told that if, that by culling, by taking out some of those smaller bass, in general, that will help the population get bigger because less fish are competing for the same forage. Do you think there's any truth to that, or is that? So, a big part of our job also is technical guidance with private landowners. We deal with a lot of uh, small ponds, small impoundments on private land, and I would say 90% of those ponds that we look at are what you would term bass crowded. Mm -hmm. And so, they have not harvested a bass since they bought the property. If you were to stop a pond and never fish it, it will eventually go bass crowded. Mm. The bass will out-reproduce the brim, and what they do, the small bass that eat up too many of the small brim, there's not enough four to five inch brim to feed largemouth up to 15, 16 inches. And so what happens is they end up growing up two years and they just die because they don't have the food they need oh, wow. to get older. And the correct measure is going to be aggressive harvest. And now all that is is pulling mouths off of your brim population and allow them to reestablish. Well, I mean, that really kind of hits like sort of the meat of the point of this stop here in Mississippi. I see all this stuff online, especially social media, where especially some of these guys that are kind of new to the fishing world will keep a few bass and, and you just see all these people attacking them. And again, I think that a lot of that's out of ignorance. I mean, kind of what you just said, it's good to harvest a certain number of bass that's out of it sounds like just about anybody. Right? Well, standard harvest rates for a small impoundment are going to be like 10 to 15 pounds bass per acre. Depending on what your fish population looks like, it could be 13 inches and below or 14 inches and below. But you want to get as many of those young mouths out of there mm. so that those brim have an opportunity to get bigger. Those little bass are the ones that are eating up all the brim spawn. You yeah. know? And so the more uh, those small bass that you can get out, the faster uh, your adult population will grow because you'll have more of the food that they need. You know? Well, it's good to hear from you because, again, I've heard it from a few people that credibility might be in question and I've been repeating it now for years and so it's good to hear from someone that knows what they're talking about. Well, Bill Dance said throw it back so somebody else can catch him another day. You let know, that go, was, let it grow. I mean, everybody grew up, you know, watching that and I guess uh, everybody listened to, to him and, and everybody quit eating bass and, and that's kind of where we're at now. That's it, it's, I mean, it's literally taboo. Like it's, if you're keeping bass, like you're the enemy of, of the bass fishermen. And I don't see that really with <laughs> any other species. I mean, maybe like bonefish or some of these fly fishing targets, but 
bass more than anything. Like if you're keeping bass, you're doing something wrong. I feel like now people, you know, they keep bass and they're like hiding their stringer on the way to the truck, you know, because they don't want anyone to catch them <laughs> with a few small bass on their stringer. So a large uh, reservoir, you know, you're going to have maybe a lot more use, you know, yep. uh, a lot more pressure. Sure. And so, uh, you know, and one that's highly uh, utilized by, by tournament trails, you know, you've got displacement of fish. Um, right and delayed mortality associated with stress uh, in, in tournaments, you know. Um, right. That's right. You know, these same guys are saying, ah, oh, you're a terrible person for harvesting a bass that's within the limits. We'll go take a giant breeding female off of a bed in a tournament, drive her all the way across the lake to the weigh-in, and then release her there at the weigh-in <laughs> while her eggs are still sitting 10 miles away, you know, and it's like, it's just, it's kind of, again, there's this taboo about harvesting bass when harvesting bass can be a good thing and maybe some of the other practices that are, you know, legal aren't so good for the bass population. So it's just, it's good to kind of shed some light on this. Well, to each their own, yeah, right? Sure, I mean, sure, like, sure. Uh, like on Barnett and all our public fisheries, we don't manage for tournament anglers. Right, right. We manage for everybody, right. you know? You can't just manage for one group of people. Of course. You have to manage for everybody. You know, and I think there's a certain amount of people out there that say, well, you know, God made these lakes and they just leave them alone and they're gonna, if we just leave them alone, they'll be fine, but that's really not true. Most of them are dammed up parts of the river and, and either way, all of them have human pressure and human influence and we've, whether it's pollution or, or, or whatever, you know, we are affecting them. And so it is kind of up to us to manage them and, and keep these things healthy. And um, it's really just a lot to think about. I don't know how you guys do it, frankly. Um, <laughs> But man, no, nah, it's cool uh, kind of hearing some confirmation about keeping bass that we aren't the devil, that you know, we're not just ruining these fisheries by, by keeping a few bass. There's really nothing wrong with that as long as you're, um, it was interesting to hear how you guys pick these limits. And as long as anglers are kind of abiding by those laws that, you know, it's really not gonna help the pop or hurt the population. And, and it may even kind of help the size of the bass, you know, to an extent, so. Right, um, eat, eat more bass. Yeah, eat more that's, bass, that's man, the, that's, that's the hashtag. Answer. That's gonna be the. <laughs> No, well, Ryan, man, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. I know it's yeah, pretty man. last minute. Yeah, and, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, this has been a treat, and it's pretty cool. It's been cool uh, the last two years, really, learning about what Mississippi's doing to, to kind of enhance its fisheries and protect its natural resources. And, um, yeah, we've been enjoying them uh, during our tours through the state. So Good thanks for all that you do. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, enjoying yourself in, in the state of Mississippi, and, and I appreciate you. Um, putting our resources out there for people to see. Yeah, yeah. I think the Mississippi is really kind of a hidden gem and we're, we're really trying to shed light on it. And uh, one request, if you could turn the AC on outside, it's been way too hot. That would be, uh, yeah, I'm, be great. I'm aware, I'm aware. <laughs> when you go to spraying vegetation out there on that airboat all day, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sunscreen is a necessity. That's right, that's right. Thanks again, man. Yes, sir. All right, so we're back here at LaFleur's Bluff State Park here in Pearl, Mississippi. It's time to cook up some fish. We're gonna flay this, this will be real quick. It flays like any fish. And then I think what we're gonna do are some largemouth bass po'boys. Feels kind of like a Mississippi type of dish. So we're gonna do some po'boys. We're gonna fry these guys up in some beer batter and put them on a sandwich. I think it's gonna be fantastic. But first steps first, we gotta clean this largemouth bass. Real simple. We'll go through this pretty quick. There it is. Good to go. Largemouth bass filet, and I mean, you know, nobody talks about eating these fish. Look at that, clean, white meat. I mean, just a beautiful piece of meat, really. Underrated. Okay, season these bad boys up with this Traeger fin and feather. Don't need to go crazy. I mean, the, the batter's gonna give it some flavor for sure, but we wanna add our own little, little secret sauce, little flavor here. Get both sides. Smell good. It smells great, right? I love this stuff. We're here for a treat, Brooks. And then next step, we're gonna kind of get our po' boy accoutrement ready to go. Okay, so one thing I hate about po' boys is when there's just literally too much bread. I mean, you already got breading on the sandwich, and so I'm gonna kind of like cut out and even sort of pick out some of this bread. And that way, you're not having to bite through that thick bread to get to the fish. Now we're gonna slice our tomato. You gotta have tomato on a po' boy. So when I'm frying fish, I like to use vegetable oil. I just think it doesn't overpower the fish, doesn't have a ton of flavor. Okay, so for the fish batter, the beer batter, you're literally just gonna buy some beer batter. It comes pretty much ready to go. This is a two ingredient kind of type of deal. Obviously the other key ingredient to beer batter, we got the batter, we need the beer. So we're gonna pour this, and now you don't want the whole beer, it says do eight ounces. So we're gonna try to get this right. We're gonna use a fork 
to kind of start mixing it together as we pour it. And now we want to really mix this well with the fork to make sure there's no clumps. You see all those bubbles? That's what gives the fish that kind of light, airy, crunchy texture is the carbonation from this beer. But that's kind of the consistency we want. I mean, it should drip off, but it should be pretty thick. That's looking about right. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna start this first piece. Oh yeah. Now this is like fair food. This is, you know, if you're got someone in your family that doesn't really like fish or isn't so sure about eating fish, this is kind of a bulletproof. Everybody likes this. Probably about five, six minutes total. But really you're just kind of looking for that, that golden brown color on the outside. Once you get that, the fish is gonna be cooked through. You don't have to worry about that. By the time it looks appetizing on the outside, it's gonna be cooked through on the inside. These looking good. We'll let them go for a minute and then we'll flip them. All right, these are about ready to flip. We got some new neighbors here. It's a couple with a couple little kids. We may offer them some fish, see if they want to try it for us, do a little taste test. But that's looking good. Nice and golden, nice and crispy. I can feel it. All right, I think the first batch is done. We're going to pull these things off. Looking fantastic. All right, so Mr. Bobby Flay, I mean, Bobby Field told me that when they're glistening, you need to add these so it kind of adheres to it. A little bit of sea salt, a little bit of garlic powder. Now, if you got garlic salt, you can just skip a step here, but I don't have any garlic salt. So we're going with garlic powder, a little sea salt. Well, oh yeah. Right oh, there. there it is, there it is. Man, good form, good form. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, good next thing. batch going down. Boom. And that looks fantastic. All right, so before we get any further, I gotta try a piece to make sure we're on the right track here. But I think we are. Look at that. Golden, flaky, crispy. Mm. Still a little warm, but. Yeah. Fantastic. Good. I guarantee you, you feed this to any diehard bass fisherman he won't believe you when he tells you, when you tell him it's, it's largemouth bass. That is so good. Flaky, light, but at the same time, it's got a little texture, got a little bite to it. It's not mushy. That is fantastic. You're in for a treat, Brooks. That is good. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> the garlic and salt on top yeah. makes it. Nice. Makes it. Glad I didn't let you down. That's right, good. So we're over over here cooking still. We just got Mother Nature being real neat. Deer coming down to get a little evening drink. I prefer a bourbon, but you can go for lake water if you'd like. We'll see if the neighbors want to try a piece. <laughs> hey man, you eat fish? Oh. It's fried. I mean, fried. it's like beer oh, battered. Oh yeah. Like fair food. Some, oh, nice. Some might still be hot. Oh. It might be a little hot. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's be a right. little warm. A little warm. Mmm. <laughs> Man, that's, that's awesome. local Delicious. caught. Yeah, caught like 20 minutes from mm. here. It's not bad, right? It's amazing. Not bad? Yeah, thanks. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Always cool. One thing I love about living in an RV full time, traveling around the RV, is people in RV parks just tend to be good people, friendly people. Everyone's always offering each other burgers and beers and whatever it is. And so, uh, they're just now kind of backing in, getting set up, figured let him try the fish. He said he liked it, he might have been just nice and lying, I don't know. But we like it, it's good. Always fun to meet your neighbors here at the state park in Mississippi. I'm delicious. Man, it's gonna be good. All right, last few pieces are coming off now. And now we got one more step. Once this is done, we're gonna toast these buns. These buns, huh? Yeah, that's right. All right, so that's good. Okay, so traditionally a po' boy is not a toasted bun. I like toasted buns. I like a little bit of crisp. We're not gonna go crazy, but we're gonna throw these buns that we cut in half right on top of this kind of grill here, this outdoor grill I got. Just to give them a little bit of toast, not too much. We'll just leave them for a couple minutes. 
doesn't take long. So. Look at all that fish. Yeah, look at all that fish. You got you got this half, and I'll take that. Okay, yeah. Okay, guys, fish is fried. All the accoutrement once again is ready to go. So like let's <laughs> let's construct this po' boy and get this done. So we got our bread nice and toasted. Look at that. Didn't take long at all. I throw that down there. We're gonna take this lemon herb aioli, aioli, which is just really just a fancy word for mayonnaise. Like, name a better rebrand than mayonnaise becoming aioli. Same stuff. We're gonna put it on both pieces of bread. A little bit on this side that we kind of carved out. On the bottom piece of bread, we're gonna go with our shredded iceberg lettuce. It's kind of like the staple of any good po' boy. <laughs> now we're gonna throw on our fish. I'm gonna kind of cherry pick a few pieces oh, that sort of picking. fit. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Right there, right there. We're gonna load it up. Put that one sideways, you notice that? Just so I can fit a little bit more. Look at that. That's a lot of fish. You order a pool boy in a restaurant, you ain't getting that much fish. You know what I'm saying? Now, we slice a lemon in half. We're gonna go ahead and squeeze some lemon juice on there and you wanna catch it with your fingers so that the seeds don't end up in there. Now we got the sliced tomatoes that we cut up earlier. We're gonna lay those on there. One, two. Okay, now to me a po' boy is shredded lettuce and tomato. Now I have seen po' boys that also had pickles. And so only because I'm madly in love with my girlfriend, Miss Southern Belle, Jennifer McGuire, who wishes she could be here with me and Brooks, she grew these cucumbers and pickled them herself. This is her famous bread and butter pickle recipe. Oh, come on. And so we just gotta put a few of these kind of sweet pickles on here. Mm. That step's optional. If I you might gotta just try one straight up. I'm telling you, try one. Try one. If you like bread and butter pickles, you're gonna like it. Get in there. Nice. You want me to? No, that's what I mean. Then we're good. If you're into bread and butter pickles, she she does it right. She's got quite the recipe. Dang. It's just a little sweet. Ooh, it's up to you good. whether or not you like it. That's but that's it, you guys. We got the fried fish. We got the tomatoes, the pickles, the lettuce, the lemon herb aioli on both sides. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna put the other side of this toasted baguette on top. I'm gonna kind of crunch it down, and that's it. Look at this, you guys. Beautiful. Mm. That's a good looking sandwich. I don't care who you are. Largemouth bass here in Mississippi. I, I bet you've never ordered a largemouth bass po' boy in a restaurant. But I'm telling you, you should. And I'm gonna go ahead and... Yeah, I mean, I don't know why you'd wait. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in this. It looks good. Mm. Oh man, that's good. Yeah? That's so good. I mean, look at that. You got the acid from the tomatoes, the little bit of sweetness from the bread and butter pickles, the freshness from the lettuce. You got that crunch from the fish and the bread that we toasted. That creaminess from the aioli, I'm telling you guys, that's a fantastic bite of food. I don't care who you are. That is so good. No one's gonna eat that and not enjoy that. Man, that's good. Well, what do I say about eating the other end of your sandwich? I mean, don't say anything at all. <laughs> You're just admitting. All right, well, here we go. We're giving the taste test. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a mouthful. Oh, God, <laughs> oh, God. Made a little blow out here. That's okay. Regardless, it tastes great. It's good, huh? Yeah. I think the combination of flavors is, is pretty fantastic. I'd order it right now. You'd order right it right now? Yeah. Well, you just did. It's gonna be seventeen ninety five. Where do I where do I, where do I swipe? <laughs> That's good. It's good, huh? Largemouth bass po' boys, field tested, Brooks approved. Brooks ruined it. I'm like Wreck It Ralph with the sandwich. Yeah, you kind of are. I'm usually like a half a paper towel roll with the sandwiches. You're making a mess, but my rig was already a mess, so it's no big deal. Ooh, what's this? Oh, oh. Yeah, the fish by itself ain't bad at all. I found this was laying over here. Large mouth bass. The new, the other, other white meat. Mm -hmm. Who knew? All right, you guys. So our, our large mouth bass stop here in the great state of Mississippi was a success. It wasn't easy fishing. We knew it wouldn't be months ago when we planned this. It's the dead heat of summer, probably the hardest time to fish in general, and still we're getting it done. And like you heard from Brad Case, this guy tournament fishes all over the country, and he said that Mississippi is one of the unsung heroes in terms of big bass states. 
Mississippi, you guys. If you fish for bass, it is worth making a trip out here. We're staying here. We're working our way through the state parks. They're all incredible. I love this state. We have both, I think, fallen in love with the state of Mississippi. So much fun. So we've done crappie. We just knocked out a little largemouth bass catch and cook. I know a little unconventional. I know you guys weren't expecting that. Fantastic all the way around. Next up, we're going to be heading south down to the coast. We're going to be meeting up with Sonny Mills, who if you watched our Mississippi series last year, you met Sonny Mills. He put us on some epic red fishing. Sounds like this year we're going to be going after some speckled trout and triple tail. We're going to be staying out at Cat Island. We're going to be going out there, staying on an island for three days. It's going to be an incredible time. Then we got an offshore trip planned. We got a mothership kayak trip planned. It's going to be incredible. Stay tuned, you guys. We got, I think, if everything goes well, two more Mississippi episodes coming up. We will see you guys next week on the coast. We're going to get into some heavy fish, I have no doubt. But for now, we're going to enjoy this fish. I'm going to have probably three helpings. We're hungry. It's been a long day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for staying till the end. I love you guys. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel like it. Either way, we will see you next week. Ciao. Adios, guys. We're going to eat. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising.